Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm, and I do have a plant propagation video for you today, but it's not the one I hoped I would have, where I take this tray of blueberry cuttings, pull out the plug, and show you the beautiful roots and my success. Instead, it is a question of failure and how you determine why your plants have failed. Now, I've talked about this topic a little bit before, and it might surprise you that I'm considering this a failure because they actually look pretty good from the top. I'll give you a close up view of the tray. But what I'm noticing is that even after a certain amount of time, five weeks in the tray almost, uh, as I pull up on them, they're not pulling back. There's no pullback from the cuttings, which means they haven't rooted. And when I pull up one by one, I don't see a lot of signs of rooting or callusing either. So, Let's review the topic of why and how cuttings fail and what that can tell you about the conditions of what you're doing wrong. So the two primary modes of cuttings failing, the first one is that they rot and that will usually be shown by them turning black either on the top or more usually from the bottom, from the soil line, that's a, a rot. And the other way that they'll fail is if they dry out and you'll usually see that by the leaves either dropping off or crisping up, that's the drying out. So those two modes of failure, either rotting or drying out basically have opposite causes. If they are rotting, usually that means that it's because it is too wet, too moist, because your soil medium was not sterile enough, meaning it was contaminated by some pathogens in there. Um, there wasn't enough air circulation. They didn't have enough light, enough warmth. The opposite end, when you're talking about it drying out, is all the opposite causes. There's too much air circulation, too much light, too much heat, uh, and the uh, cuttings just don't have enough humidity around them, and so they dry out, lose all their moisture, and they fail that way. But these ones are doing a third thing, which is they're sort of languishing. They've, they look good. They've been in the con same conditions from my cutting room that many of my roses, many of my shrubs, many of my perennials have succeeded in. And so they actually seem to have conditions that they like. I'm not gonna get to the bottom of this until I get a closer look at all of them here. And I'm gonna talk to you about why I think these have failed to root and what I can do about it. This definitely called for a closer look. And so what I did is I sat down and pulled everything out of the tray and divided them into two different bins. The one on the right here, the black bin, is the ones that have failed. And you can look on the bottoms of those and you can see that they are black from the bottom or starting to rot, certainly not looking good. Uh, they do have some green on the top here, but I'm gonna call these ones failed. And of the 72, that accounted for about 16 of them. More interestingly here in the other, I guess it's going to be 56 of them, they were not all failures. And uh, what I found as I pulled through is that this one here, very uh, strangely, uh, was nicely rooted. Uh, complete anomaly from the rest. This one did a great job of going straight to root. Uh, this one here also has some roots on it. Uh, this one here has some roots on it. So we have three that are rooted and a couple more that I would call heavily calloused. So probably five or six in total that I'm going to either prematurely call successes or call successes because they're rooted. So that is nothing to jump and shout about that we had uh, six out of 72, but it's also not a complete failure. So let's get to the bottom of why these rates were so low. And I was expecting that blueberries were a little more difficult than roses in cuttings, at least by reputation, but I wasn't expecting anything this low, which is sort of in that 10% range. So what I've done is I've pulled up a study and maybe I should have even started right here, is looking up to see what other propagators have been successful with. And in this research here, uh, it's quite on point because they are using the same species of blueberries, even down to the right, same cultivar. They're using a cultivar named Blue Crop, which I think this one is. Uh, and they took their cuttings. Now this might be the first sign that I did something wrong, is they took their cuttings in late August, which is right now, but I took these five weeks ago. So I would have taken these sort of mid-July. Um, now, as you know, on many plants, the stage of growth that you take the cuttings from actually can make a big difference in their results. And I noticed that with roses is very much as well, is that if I get them a little bit too firm, or if I get them a little bit too soft, it changes everything about my success rate. So that might be my first clue. Second thing of note here that I'm gonna put up on the screen here is that even at their uh, researcher controlled levels, they still only ended up between 37 and 40% of success rate. Finally, within this research, I wanted to show one other thing, one other graphic here is that they noted that they had much better success with the uh, 
cuttings that had begun to turn brown for the year. So still from the same year of growth, the first year of growth, but the cuttings, all the ones that I took, I took from the young, youngest green shoots, and they had a much better success rate with the shoots that were a little bit brown on the outside, indicating that the wood was a little bit riper. So I took it early and I took it from fresher wood and ended up getting a 10% success rate compared to their success rate, which was closer to 40%. Now, makes sense the next thing i should do is replicate what they did in the study here so what i'm going to do now just to, so that when you eventually see the follow-up to this is i'm going to take a fresh new tray of soil i'm going to restick these ones that are still in good green condition and i'm going to let them finish out uh, we're rooting to the degree that they are the ones that were brown or black from the bottom obviously i'm going to throw those away uh, but the ones that are still green and plump or the ones that are calloused and the ones that are rooted certainly i'm going to put them back in and let them finish their job then i'm going to fill the other half of the tray with some of the browner uh, more mature material and i'm going to do it here now in the right time of year now the research does talk also about the level of iba that you should use uh, or rooting hormone and it's still the same level of iba that i used in the initial uh, trial which was about uh, 0.3 percent and they have here as uh, 3000 ppm which is the same level so i'm not going to change my rooting hormone but what i will do is now i'm changing the timing and i'm changing the material that i'm putting into the cutting tray Okay, so as promised, I've gone ahead and restuck these green ones from the previous cutting session into this half of the tray, and I'm going to do the other half of the tray. And by the way, this is a brand new tray with fresh soil in it. I just didn't want to take the chance that I was contaminating them or putting them into soil that already had rot organisms in them. Probably a little paranoid on my part, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And these are the cuttings now from that sort of browner wood or firmer wood from later on in the season, a little bit riper. And while I'm doing this, by the same method, by the way, it really is uh, the same method you've seen me use for my rose cuttings, the same method I used on these, which is to just cut myself a three or four inch section with a number of nodes on it. That, the nodes are pretty close together on blueberries. Uh, and then stick it into the rooting hormone, uh, just a light tap in, and then stick it into the tray here, and that's it. And as I keep on going there, uh, maybe I will have a quick discussion with you about that troubleshooting for failure, because as I mentioned, rotting or drying out is a failure mode that happens relatively quickly. I would expect to see it within the first couple of weeks after you take your cuttings, is that uh, either you're rotting or you're drying out if your conditions are not proper. In this case, it actually is an encouraging thing in a funny way that all of these sat here for so long in apparently such good condition. It means that the light wasn't too high, that the humidity wasn't too low, uh, that they had the temperatures that they appreciated, they just weren't taken at the right time of year. And so that's what I did here is I sort of troubleshot, okay, so what do I do? I do riper cuttings, do I do uh, uh, softer cuttings? That's one of the two ways you can go. Of course, in this case, I'm guided by the research. So hopefully I can count on that being the case. Uh, but that's the kind of thing you have to be thinking of is if they're not failing the one way and they're not failing in the other, and they're just kind of sitting here, uh, do I moderate up or down the firmness or softness of the stem as I take it, or do I change the rooting hormone? And that's something I checked in the research as well, is to see whether a, uh, a change in the strength of the rooting hormone to encourage fast rooting might be in order. In this case, it doesn't look like it was, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, but uh, that is all of my thoughts on it. So I'm definitely gonna do a follow-up on this. I wanna see which half of the tray continues on. This one is more or less just for interest. I actually kind of think, and, and this is another thought here, is that if they root quickly, that's the best case scenario. And if they take five weeks to even start callusing or rooting, aside from those few that actually were already rooted, um, I have my doubts about whether they have enough energy stored in them, enough nutrients stored in them uh, to continue on that journey and give me good roots at any point here, but no point in stopping them now. These ones here, I'm hoping, will go a little bit faster because I've taken them in the stage that they seem to appreciate. Um, if I can get that 40% that the researchers were doing, that would be really a good start. Seems like uh, 
you, you'd want to be swinging for higher than that, but if that's sort of like the general trend in blueberries is you can get 40%, then that's what I'll be aiming for. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this discussion kind of useful. And as I say, I'll be back to you with results as soon as I have them on this half of the tray and of course this half too.